welcome everybody. My name is, uh, no, no, not in German, not this time. Less, lesson learned. Um, so I just want to introduce um, this session because I um, invited Nagaro for this session and I work for them quite a while, um, or with them quite a while. And actually I um, met them independently. So last I met for the transition topics from Solution Manager to uh, Cloud ALM and Julia are already a heavy user of Cloud ALM for their cloud projects. And uh, I thought it would be good uh, to bring them together. So um, it's also for them, the first session here. And um, yeah, it, I think it's a, it's a nice uh, journey they take for Cloud LM for uh, private and public cloud projects. And Lars, with his journey uh, using Cloud LM as a central instance for their uh, project and regulated environments. So have fun and enjoy the presentation. Yes. Thank you very much, Axel. Yeah, my biggest problem today was that I was thinking this morning which T-shirt I should use. Um, I produced one T-shirt was I love Zap Cloud ALM. The other one was I love Signavio. And I had a big problem with the decision, but I think I love SAP. Yeah, that's the way which works. So, unlocking the future. Thanks, Axel, for this nice headline. <laughs> what we plan, what is our idea? Um, in February, we had a meeting in Waldorf with the colleagues from the Cloud ALM team, where we discuss the approach for the, or the, the possible approach for the um, regulated industry. And there they show these, I call it, SAP Mountain, and um, on this SAP Mountain, they described this um, base camp here, and we already um, reached the base camp. They describe what they understand behind the midway camp, where we are actually on the way to, and they describe their thoughts for the aim for the peak. And based on this um, mountain, um, we had the idea to, to create our presentation today, and we create Nagaro's way to the peak, and we start with our own mountain. So we build our own mountain, and based on this mountain, we have our own story for the base camp, our own story for the midway camp. At the end, we aim for the peak, but it's not really aim for the peak. We are in the next step, actually. We have a clear way to the peak. That means we have not only an idea, we have an actually working solution, which we built together with our colleague, Lars Olböter from the right source. And, yeah, he is also my um, joker if you have any questions regarding um, the solution. We will show later. So, at the end, we will show you how we come to the peak. Before we start with the presentation, a few words about Nagaro. I do not know if you all knew Nagaro already, um, because in the German market, we are actually not so popular. Um, Nagaro is a classical um, IT service provider. We are not only come from the SAP side. We have um, at least 19,000 experts in over 33 countries. And from this 19,000 experts, we have 2,300 SAP experts in our company. So the rest is not so important, but I think it's for you absolutely important that we have 2,300 SAP experts in our company and we can deliver SAP all over the world, actually. But it's also very interesting what we do outside the SAP, and here are only some examples of our experience. And I think a very popular 
solution the SAP, uh, the, the Nagaro colleagues built is the lighting control software for the White House and for the Liberty, State of Liberty in, in New York. So we are the one who can switch off the light in the White House. We never do that in the past, but we can do it because we develop the software for the lighting system there. The are the things you can find on our homepage and you will find there things and something about that. But for you is important our SAP experience. So these are the industries where we are familiar with and uh, I think this is important for you and in these industries we are a full service provider. So that means we can deliver everything you need. So this was now the advertiser and now we start with the presentation. And I hand it over to my colleague, Julia, Thank please. You, so my name is Julia. Um, I'm right now, for the last two years, I've been working as a project manager in the cloud services at Nagaro. And 2023, uh, my team and I decided that we will be committed to SAP Cloud ALM. That means every new project that we get, we start with SAP Cloud ALM. It doesn't depend if it's an ERP project like um, S4HANA or the Success Factors projects. All of them go into Cloud ALM. And here we will just present today how we use it and um, also give a brief feedback from our customers maybe at the end. So all of you know the landing page of the implementation. And here you can just see what we, of course, use in our project. It's the normal um, processes, um, like project and setup, the tasks, the managed scope, the processes, process authoring, and also the requirements. How do we use it? Of course, all of you know this. At first, you do the DDA with the customer, and then you just go into the, the processes, like you, you manage the scope, you process what the customer needs, um, with the whole best practices. Um, of course, when the project starts, you also have the requirements that you discuss with your customers. Um, and yeah, the whole life cycle is then in approving customers. Warum ist es aus? <laughs> Warum ist es aus? Ah, jetzt ist wieder. Perfect. Um, yeah, and of course, also the user stories. So, um, I right now took the J60 as a brief um, example. We use the Cloud ALM in this way that when we have our fit to standard workshops, we go in um, with the scope IDs. So we show our customers, of course, the system, but then after we have presented the system, we always go into Cloud ALM and discuss the whole process with the customer. Um, in this whole, um, process, we then start asking, okay, is this really what you need or do we have at any point some kind of gaps that we have to um, write down and we solve this, like our requirements are the gaps that we have in the fit to standard projects. Um, so our consultants then go and, and discuss it with the customers and create requirements at this point. Um, yeah, of course, we then also, um, if needed, we also go and, and change the whole process flow that is in there. So we also have a bit to do with the process authoring at this point. And um, when our customer then really says, okay, everything okay, then we go a step further. So um, here maybe also how we work with the whole requirement theme, because um, as I said, we are first in a fit to standard workshop. And then we notice that some gaps are existing, so we write them down, like my consultants write them down. Then they hand it over to us as PMO. So that means I and um, maybe my PMO, we go then to the customer and sit down together and we discuss the whole process again and um, evaluate if this is really what they need or not. Um, of course, this sometimes doesn't work directly, so we turn a few rounds. 
And in the end effect, we have a whole requirement that is also approved by the customer and by us if this is really in standard or if we have to go out of scope or whatever at this point. Then um, we go in the whole approval process and out of this we create the user stories, the test cases, and in the best we have a whole requirement life cycle at this point. Um, yeah. That was how we really set up the project, that is how we work together with our customers and the way that the success factors projects really work with us but also the EIP. Then we come to the testing via Cloud ALM because also we do this with our customers together. And here I must say last year on the ALM Summit, I really told our customers not to work with the testing via Cloud ALM because it really was uh, rudimentary and we couldn't use it in many um, cases. But this year, it's the first year that we really are committed also to do the test management in Cloud ALM. And I must really say thank you that you worked so hard on this <laughs> because this is really a, a huge improvement for us. And um, yeah, I must say I got the feedback from a customer last week in the Success Factors um, project that they are really very happy with how this whole thing works. Also, since you now have the whole um, test plans, this is also a huge improvement. So yeah, what do we do here? Um, our customer and we do it together, like we create the whole test cases in um, Cloud ALM. Here we mostly use the manual testing at the moment because um, we are in a project state where we don't need the automated test testing yet. I think most of you know how to create a manual test case. You just have to choose the scope that is in that is, and then you just create the whole steps like in these few pictures. Um, wait, one back. What we also mostly do is that we use the Excel upload um, for us, it's easier than really creating all the test steps uh, manually. So um, normally we have the testing set up in one whole day. Now we come to the whole test plan functionality. Um, this isn't out so long yet, but this is a huge improvement because we right now can really cluster if we are on the... Um, on which stage we are on, and our customers can really go through the different steps. So, um, yeah. Thanks a lot for that again. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, we are very happy with this. Test cases. Warum passiert das immer? weiter? Okay, perfect. The whole test case management is. Um, our customers do this alone. They just come to us when they have some kind of defects. Um, we have a process set up with them that they have to go through. That means, um, yeah, we have linked everything together and I don't know if I have the picture in, but I will definitely explain it. The whole defect management we also do via Cloud ALM, so we don't jump into any other tools at this point. We don't go to Jira or something like this. We just really use the ALM in the IT, but also in um, our stream leads, also in our streams, let's say it like this. Yes, and why do we like to use Cloud ALM so much? Um, in our experience, you always have a round picture. So that means you start with the implementation, you start with the Fincher Standard Workshops, and then also if you go into the test management, you always have this round picture linked to one scope item. And yeah, that is the way we use it, and our customers are happy with it. I'm giving back to Lars. Okay. Hello? Okay. So now, um, we came to the peak, and I would like to show you the way how we stormed to the peak with our solution we built. And uh, who of you have experience in the regulated industry. Yeah. Okay, there are some. So I have not to dis describe too much, but um, before I start with the technical side of the presentation, I would like to um, 
yeah, to talk about the reason why we validate software and what is the regulated industry. And um, the reason, the main reason is that we have to, to guarantee that uh, our software or that the software works as required from the users. So that means we have to guarantee that all the requirements, and that's a link to the cloud ALM, um, from at the, uh, for the process are um, working in the software. And that's the reason why we start, or why we start to create such a framework. So beside of this main reason, we have uh, some more um, topics around that. Um, I think uh, you all know in which industries we, we use that. We are in the life science industry, in the healthcare industry, um, with, these, um, with our solutions. Um, we are also working in the public sector, where we have also regulated a regulated environment from a little bit from another side, but it's nearly the same. Um, for me, it's um, very important that um, the, the validation process is not only cost money, it, it also saves money. That means we um, have always a situation that uh, we start in a project and all the, the guys in the project told us how much the validation process costs and we calculate the validation. But at the end, it's so, if you look at the end of the project in the operation phase of, of the software, and that's important, Think we also realize our solution to um, support the operation process later. Uh, it's so that a reliable software reduce downtimes and uh, ineffic inefficiencies in your your software. So I think you all have heard about our regulations where we are, which are in our software projects. Inside, we have G, all the GXP things, we have the GAMP 5, and so on. And at the end, it's so that the software validation um, is, um, it, it, it's, um, deep, um, it, 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 it's, um, putting you, it's, it's um, saving you against reputation damage and, and all these other things. But now we move over to our solution. We cover all our solution under the product name, product name fit for ac accelerators. And our first important um, point there, or solution there is our template, because this is the base of the whole process. Our template starts with a classical S4 HANA, which we normally um, deliver in a private cloud solution in our industry. Um, public cloud is not so popular in our industry in the moment, but we will see what comes in the future. Um, based on this S4 HANA system, we have our own content. First, we deliver the standard S4HANA system. And based on this S4HANA system, which have a best practice in, uh, configuration, we have a so-called Nagaru run package, which ensure that um, the system runs in the way how we expected that it should run. So you all know when you implement the best practices in the system, when you activate them, 
they never work like expected and you have to correct them. So that is uh, what we do on that, what we deliver with our run package. Then we have our authorization package. These are Nagaro rules. And now we come to the industry content. We have um, so-called Nagaro solutions. These are add-ons um, like CX add-ons or um, MRP cockpits and so on. We have a big um, knowledge in the life science industry and there we have uh, different um, solutions which are coming from our colleagues in the, in the software, uh, customer the software developing part. We have their experience in HIV, uh, HIV testing platforms, telemedicine platforms, clinical trace solutions, and so on and so on. So we produce from this knowledge package solutions which you find under this life science solutions. We have an, our own forms package which we deliver. We have uh, for sure the normal ZAP licensable functions like R&D, EHNS and so on. And we have the industry cloud solutions. And at least, and this is very important for the fit to standard workshops in our industry, we deliver in the system a master data package with the industry reference. That, the idea behind that is that we have not to use a forklift if we have a fit to standard workshop, for example, for the BD9. So we can use some pills in the fit to standard workshop and not a forklift because the colleagues in the life science industry normally not like to, to, to run a fit to standard workshop with a forklift. So this is one side, and on the other side now, we start with the ZAP Cloud ALM. And there we, and that was the first contact to, to Axel because we had the uh, problem that we need to store our documents and our content we delivered in previous times in the sol solution manager, and we need to need a way to deliver them in the cloud ALM, in the SAP cloud ALM. So what we deliver there, we have a complete, our own process documentation. That means we have not only the standard scripts you all know, we have a so-called market requirement specification where we describe the requirements from the market to our solution. And based on this market requirement specifications, we have functional specifications where we describe how we solve with the standard this requirement. Sure, we have the template documentation and the customizing documentation that's available for all of you. We have our own test documents. This is also a big learning in the life science industry, if you deliver their test scripts, which are provided by the SAP, they all told you, hey, did you know what test scripts are? These are not test scripts. So we rename the documents from the SAP, and now these are test procedure descriptions. It's the same content, <laughs> but it's another name, and so it's easy to handle, and nobody expects to get a test script. That's very simple. So based on this, we have so-called test recording templates where we only describe the recording of the tests. And at the end, we have our fit for process house in ZAP Signavio. So uh, for the future, I learned yesterday, we have to know, see how it works and yeah, how we use the... Uh, Shatsi sent me a photo <laughs> in the face. <laughs> Um, this is the consulting solution by, from, this, from the Navio to store the documents in the, SOM, uh, in the cloud ALM. So this is our template content we deliver. And based on this content, um, we start to deliver 
or to, to develop our fit for Zap Cloud ALM solution. In the middle, yes, we have the Cloud ALM. That's the base of our solution. And yeah, here I have already, I have also the Signavio inside Tricentis. I always said our customers, the SAP, will guarantee that this works. It's not our, our part, <laughs> it's the part of the SAP. And we deliver in this SAP Cloud ALM our content. This content we store normally in the data manager, in a DMS from the customer. So the document management system from the customer, there we store the documents and we link them to the processes IDs in the Cloud ALM. This is standard, it's not spectacular. On the other side, we have the requirements in the Cloud ALM, and there um, we had the problem that we need a solution to, to um, cover these requirements in one document and to bring them together. And our idea was we use for this service now, and this was the idea together with Lars. Um, we use ServiceNow, and we create in ServiceNow a master document. I will show it in the next steps. And in this master document, we um, have all the requirements per each process. This was our idea, and this is our idea. We already released it. It's, it's finished, and we the prototype is running, so we can deliver it if needed. This requirement management um, still works with the requirement management in the Cloud ALM, and so we have also tasks in the project management we can, which we can handle optional in the JIRA environment. This is also possible, it's also an idea from us. And this was very interesting because in the beginning, um, this was the um, start where when Axel um, bring me and my colleagues in our company together because he said, hey, your colleague is still working on this JIRA integration. And I start to communicate internally with my colleague about the JIRA communication. And so now we have a JIRA communication up there from my colleague. Thanks, Axel. And we have here our requirement management and service now. So, but if we talk about validation, you need a validation approach, and we put our validation approach on the activate phases, you all know, prepare, explore, realize, deploy, and run. We start normally in the plan phase, where we produce the validation plan, the migration plan, we qualify, make the hardware qualification. These are the steps we have in the prepare phase. Then we come to the specification phase, where we have the fit to standard workshops. We create user requirement specifications. Based on this user requirement specifications, we um, describe how we plan to, to realize this in the functional specification. Then we have the customizing specification or the design specification in for the realization. In the realized phase, we run a risk assessment on this and we start to test it and have the end documents with test report, um, end user training, and so on, and so on. These are the standard, um, what our standard validation approach. Uh, in the past, I think most of you see this we model. Uh, we've used that also, but since the last GAMP conference, uh, this is also very popular to change from the V model to this one, to this 
um, flat model uh, because it's possible to work a little bit more agile with this model. So now, and at, in the next point, how this all plays now together in our approach with the ZAP Cloud ALM and ServiceNow. So this is our, these are our, our two players in this. And we have also our faces again. And normally we start with the upload of the, SA, of the Nagaro Fit4 content. We scope the solution all in the Cloud ALM. We create an, a migration plan. Um, if it works in the, the business transformation center, this is our idea for the future, that we also document the complete migration phase in the transformation center. It's in the moment only this first step we plan there, but for the future is our plan to extend this and to have the complete um, migration plan in the Business Transformation Center. So then, with the start of the Expro phase, we adjust all processes to the cloud ALM, from the Cloud ALM and servers now, and we start to um, record in the Cloud ALM the additional requirements, which we generate in the Fit to Standard workshops. Based on this, we create the URS, and then we release the URS with the digital signature we have in the um, service now available. We create then the FS, a functional specification, and we release this again with the digital signature there in the service now, which is available. In the realized phase, we synchronize the requirements back to the cloud ALM. We run there the project management, the task management, transport management, and so on, all which is possible. In parallel, in the service now, we create the CS and the DS, oh, DS and CS, sorry, there's a typing. Typing is wrong. It's a DS, a design specification, and the customizing specification. We run the risk assessment, and then we come to the deploy phase. We get from Tricentis the test report, and we get the migration report from the cloud ALM. And with the run phase, we came back to the service now. And we support, we start the support based on the structure we built in the project, in the service now, and that the structure we use for the whole process later in the support phase in service now. Over the whole project, we have a reporting up there in service now, Jira, and hopefully also later in Cloud ALM, if it's possible. Now a short recap about our solution. Our solution covers all the phases of validation and of, of, of sub-activate. We start normally with um, importing our content in the solution on the ALM side and also on the S4 side. Then we run a project. There we use our ZAP Cloud ALM accelerator to document the solution and to um, bring our task also or to use our task in this um, project management. And at the end, we use the content we produce here to support the run phase in ServiceNow and to have their uh, working structure in the ServiceNow. So, and the whole reporting is over this 
over the project and also later in the run phase when we use servers now for the support and for the ITSM. Thank you very much. And yeah, now we are on the peak and I think imagine what we can do together. Thanks. <laughs>